Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Look at this old fart. I think it's about 43, actually, something. First of, uh, first of January, 17th of January, 1966. Amazing time. Straight out of school, basically. And uh, in, prior to my becoming a cameraman, I was what was called a uh, transcriptions officer working with a lovely English gentleman called Hugh Jones. And uh, we uh, had a huge amount of fun until one day oh, the, we transferred videotapes and uh, film etc all around the country and around the world BBC etc etc rugby games and that sort of stuff in 1966 and one of mine uh, that I sent ended up in Hawaii which is just typical of course and a couple of other jokers who I've spoken to have done that however it did eventually get to the BBC but one day I walked into the studio we actually into the control room of CR3 and Christchurch and <coughs> downstairs in Gloucester Street and I suddenly saw the light well, I actually saw the lights, of course, and it was just a brilliant thing, and I thought, heavens above, uh, I've got to work in that place. So I became a cameraman, I asked the station manager whether I could. Another bloke who um, was uh, a little bit in for dig was uh, asked to leave, and I acquired his position. I'd already been doing a lot of um, ad hoc camera work just filling in stuff but I wasn't ever trained but of course uh, that was the that was the middle of 1966 I suppose and then we trained ourselves basically we uh, used to do camera training and all sorts of stuff I probably did a few more <laughs> camera training things than others um, and uh, in those days we did everything swept the floor painted sets built sets tore them down floor managers as well as did camera work. Um, my very first shift, I'll never forget, uh, prior to getting a job, was a thing called Flick It. And it was on a program called Half a Mo in Just a Minute. You can imagine that would have to be a children's program, wouldn't it? Um, and by Flick It, I had to flick a switch seriously off and on to turn a turntable. And that was my one job for the whole day. Cause it went on for a, a part of the series of the of the um, progression of the particular story was um, a turntable with a record on it or something like that, and so there was my introduction to the television studio really, and from then I just progressed and did camera work and uh, many other programs and eventually became the studio camera supervisor, which was rather nice and uh, went from uh, when Channel 2 started, Television 2 started, South Pacific Television, from five cameramen to 15 in one day. That was rather nice, wasn't it? In the middle of that, 1973-74 occurred, of course, uh, and that was the Commonwealth Games. And this was the most significant introduction to situation <coughs> with regard to changes, and that was the introduction of colour. 1973 and we did a little exercise at QE2 Park in 1973 which didn't go to air from memory um, but we rehearsed in colour and recorded it and I think we just watched it to see how wonderful it was uh, but of course as always and still is um, the viewfinders were in monochrome and were then I learnt camera work, studio camera work especially, by watching Coronation Street, the very original Coronation Street obviously, where you could hear the pedestals because it was all live, even though it was recorded, tele-recorded in those days and sent here on film, would you believe? And that's why, uh, um, which are the sort of things that I used to send around as a transcriptions officer as well. Um, you could hear these pedestals shooting into the, uh, the set. And you could also hear them racking, changing lenses once the, they were cut away from to the next camera. And then back to this one, and the other one would... You could... That's how they used to rack. That's how they used to sound. A fixed complement of four lenses. And you, you knew damn well if they were in a mid-shot or an over-shot or two-shot 
first of all, cut away to a mid shot of that of the camera f over there. That next one would be going to a mid shot on camera two, for example. You could hear it. I learnt from that. I learnt. Uh, uh, the, the whole thing about that, of course, was that it was rigid and um, restricted because of the type of pedestals and the fact that it was all live and things. Uh, but it made you learn the the subtleties of the of the game. Really. So you're suggesting that, that people should actually watch more craft work? And yes, learn from it. yes, I do. But the problem, of course, with regard to studio work is that there ain't much these days, which is a bit sad. Uh, however, if that's the way it will ever go forever um, and the studio per se will be phased out, I can't see it completely being phased out because cranes and things are still magnificent, um, no, no matter whether they're three-man jobs or uh, the type that you work, you operate in, individually. Um, they're still cameras. They still make beautiful pictures. That's the way to learn, though. Just like writing a story. You can't write until you've read. So it was terribly BBC, first of all, of course. Uh, and there were some lovely characters from the BBC as well working. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But I suspect that it, uh, yes, it's a little more laissez-faire now because... Uh, the rigidity of the thing has lessened by virtue of the fact, I suspect, that the programs that are done now are not the same type that we did originally. Even if you were doing children's programs, the whole thing had to be rigid and structured because, of course, well, the first times were, were never recorded at all. They went out live, and so you couldn't be... Um, uh, undisciplined, if you like. You had to be very careful. And everything went from the 30 seconds to the 10, etc., etc., as it still does. Um, but even if it, when it progressed to the recording situation, you had to do it in blocks. And generally speaking, it was in chronological order as well. So uh, it had to be f fairly intense uh, with regard to that. The, the the major change in in the studio work is the lack of pedestal capability because there aren't any in Christchurch anymore. In fact, the only pedestals in the country, as far as I know, are, other than for CTV, um, are proper pedestals I'm talking about, <coughs> and cranes and things, are at Avalon. There are may there may be a couple or three or four in Auckland, Television New Zealand in Auckland. But I don't know what type of programs I do. And